Joshua Cedar Creek Dulcimers. You're watching Mountain Dulcimer Basics, lesson number three. In this lesson, we're going to learn just how easy it is to make all kinds of chords on your dulcimer when you're tuned to the traditional Ionian tuning. We're also going to learn the most efficient key to tune our dulcimer to so we can get all those chords that we're looking for. By the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to make all of these chords on your dulcimer. And once you've learned just these first 11 chords, you're already going to be able to play back up in the common keys that most people are going to be playing and singing in. As a matter of fact, once you even learn just the first three chords in the lesson, G, C, and D, you'll already be able to play back up in all 454 songs in just these books alone right here. And here's the neat thing about it. Even though these books were designed for guitar, banjo, ukulele, once we know where the chords are located on our dulcimer, we can play out any book. Any book that has the chords, we can use it now. So that way it opens us up to play whatever style of music we want to play. We're not limited to only books that people have transposed for the dulcimer. Well, before we get started, a couple things I want to mention. First of all, stay tuned for the very end of the lesson, because after you've learned the basics of chord playing, I'm going to show you how to start running or add embellishments to your chord playing where you're running, throwing in some little fillers and some little runs. Just to give our chord playing a little more flavor or jazz it up a little bit, so to speak. The other thing, there's going to be three different chord charts at the very end as well, too. I wanted to show you all the most common chords that I end up using and needing when I'm playing along with a group as well. The other thing I want to do, give a big shout out to our good friends, Kent and Rachel Woolston. Rachel is an amazing piano player, and she did some super tracks on the keyboard for us to play along with her. And I want to thank her a bunch for that. Matter of fact, if you like what she did, in the comment section, go ahead and throw some comments to her to let her know how much we appreciate uh, her doing those tracks for us on the piano. Okay, let's grab our dulcimers and let's get started. Okay, let's learn our three main chord positions. Basically, these three main chord positions will get us a chord anywhere on the dulcimer that we're looking for. And if you've watched lesson two where we talked about the harmonies, believe it or not, you already know all three positions. Remember how we said whatever note you're on on this string, if you go one behind, that's your harmony on the bass. And if you go two behind, that's your harmony on the middle string. Well, that's actually our first chord position. One behind on the bass, two behind on the middle. And wherever you go, that chord pattern will get you a chord anywhere on the dulcimer, even way up here. So there's our first chord position. It's wherever the melody note is, one behind on the bass, two behind on the middle string. By the way, when I'm showing later on chord positions, I'm going to use fret numbers for it. So this is the way the fret numbers will show up. The bottom number will represent your first string. The middle number represents that middle string. Then the top number will represent the bass string. So later on when I just have straight chord charts, that's the way I'm going to show them. So the bottom number is your first string, the middle number your middle string, the top number your bass string. Okay, now for the second position. Once again, you remember in the harmonies how every once in a while, instead of one behind, you move that bass up to the same fret. There's your second chord position. And once again, wherever we go, that pattern will get us a chord anywhere on the dulcimer. So there's your second chord position. Now on the third chord position, once again, in our harmony section of lesson number two, the middle string, instead of two back, every once in a while you go three back, one, two, three. Well, that's our third chord position. And once again, anywhere we go, that pattern will give us a chord anywhere we go on the dulcimer. So that's what I want you to do right now. We're not worrying about chord names or nothing yet. I just want you to get used to the feel of those three different patterns. Because when we start doing our chords, 90% of the time, it's going to be one of those three chords patterns that you use for any chord we make. Now, there is an exception to that, and that's what we're going to teach next before we do the first song. And it's what I call power chords, and I'll get into that in a moment. So here's what I want you to do. Either pause it or shut it off, whatever you want to do. Start, pick a spot. And this is a good spot to start, where you're at the fifth fret there, the third fret, 
the fourth fret there. Now while you're at that position, go ahead and just move the bass one up one. You don't have to move around a lot. Go back to your first pattern again, then do the third pattern, and back to your first pattern again. Then pick another spot, do the same thing. And just get used to the sounds it makes, but more so just getting used to the feel of what those patterns feel like. So when we do get into playing, they feel a little more comfortable for you. And by the way, once again, getting down to fingers, use whatever fingers works for you. What I like to do when I'm chording, as you've seen, I use my thumb here, my pointing finger there. I like to use this finger for the next one because it just gives me a little more reach is what it is when I'm wanting to move around on the chords. If I'm using this finger, I seem to just have a little more reach to reach those chords with ease. So give it a go. When you come back, we're going to talk about those power chords. Okay, next we're going to learn how to play what I call power chords. Now, on a regular chord, to make a regular chord, I should say, you have three separate notes. You have your, your main note, you have a third, and you have a fifth. And that's what makes a regular full chord. So that's why those other patterns will be the patterns that we use the most often, you know, because it makes our full chords that we're going to be looking for the majority of the time. Now, what a power chord does is it doesn't have the three notes. It's what, what I use a power chord for is if I want to really drive home the main note of the chord I'm playing. So, for example, the first power chord pattern is this. You're at the same fret on the middle string and the bass string. Then whatever fret we're on, if we come up three frets on the first string, that makes our first power chord position. What we're doing, and this is the reason why I call it a power chord, the lowest note and the highest note are the same, but they're an octave apart. And then you got that fifth harmony in the middle. So when I want to just drive home a chord on my dulcimer, I'll use one of those, I'll throw in one of those power chords. And we're going to use it on one of the versions of Amazing Grace when we're playing in, actually in the key of A. We're going to use a, an E power chord just to show you how to fit it into a song. Now, wherever you go, that power chord, that position will give you a power chord anywhere on your dulcimer. The only exception is when we run into our six and a half fret. Because like if we're up here at the fourth fret with our middle and our bass string, if we were counting our six and a half fret, that would put us right there for our third fret. Well, right away we can tell that's definitely not a power chord we're looking for. So we skip the six and a half fret and move up to the seven. And there would be our power chord. So once again, the power chord, the same pattern wherever you go. But when you get to that six and a half fret, we just make the exception and we don't count the six and a half fret. So that'll get you your power chord. And the first note, the lowest note, and the highest note is the chord that you're actually playing, by the way. Now the next pattern for a power chord, you're at the same fret on the first two strings this time. You're one fret up on the bass string. So now these are our two main chords. They're the same note at the same octave, so it just kind of drives home that particular note a little heavier. And again, wherever we go, that'll give us a power chord. Now, this power chord pattern does have an exception, though. There's going to be a, a few spots where, when whatever these are on, if you go just the one up on the bass, I mean, it makes a chord, but it's not our power chord that we're looking for. So instead of just one up, in those spots, we're going to go two up on the bass. And that'll put us back to a major chord. So there's just a couple spots where we need to do that. But most of the time, wherever these two notes are at, you're just one fret up on the bass string. And again... That'll give us our power chord. So once again, go ahead and pause this, shut it off, whatever you want to do, and just practice those two power chord patterns. Okay, up to this point, we haven't been worrying about the names of the chords because we just want to get used to the patterns of the chord. Now, this is where it's going to come in. The reason why I didn't immediately get into the names of the chord 
is because depending on what key you got your dulcimer tuned to, the names of those chords are going to change. Now, the reason why when I made these electric dulcimers, and by the way, you don't have to have an electric dulcimer, of course, to do the chords on. The only reason why I use it is, is because it's just so easy to record the electric dulcimer. Matter of fact, I just plug it straight into the phone. I don't even have to have an amp or anything to do it with. So that's the reason why I'm using the electric dulcimer. It's just easier for me to record it. But the tuning, like I say, no matter what key you're tuned into, those patterns will always be the same on any dulcimer. The only difference will be is depending on what you're tuned to, it'll change the names of those chords. Now from this point on, I'm assuming you're going to be tuned up to the key of G. Now the reason why I'm assuming you want to learn chords is because you either want to play with a group or maybe family reunions, you want to play with the aunt and uncles on the other instruments, or perhaps you know you would like to play in church, or if you yourself sing, uh, instead of waiting for somebody else to be your backup accompaniment, you can be your own accompaniment. So that's the reason why I actually called these electric instruments the G series, because I'm reintroducing the key of G to the dulcimer world like I was introduced to it almost 40 years ago. You can do chords in any key on the dulcimer, but you have the most versatility and you get the most common chords you're going to use when you're playing with a group when you're tuned up to the key of G. That puts your bass string at G. That makes your little ones all D. So you got D and G for your two notes. Now when we're in G, the most common keys that most people play and sing in, we're going to be able to accompany them without retuning our dulcimer, without a capo, without adding any extra frets or anything. When we're in the key of G, all those common chords we need are going to be there. So anyway, we're going to, the first thing we're going to do, and that's what the, we're, the series is set up for. We're going to be playing Amazing Grace, and I'm going to teach you how to do the same song, Amazing Grace, in four different keys. We're not going to retune the dulcimer. We're not using a capo. You don't require an extra fret or anything to get the chords that we're looking for. So the first chord pattern we're going to use is the key of G pattern. The first three chords you learn on any string instrument, or most any string instrument, I should say, with the exception of ukulele maybe, you're going to learn G, C, and D as your, as your first three chords. Because those are the three most common chords you're going to be playing when you're playing with, with a group, especially guitar players and so forth. So the first G chord pattern, and again, for this to really be a G chord, we need to be tuned to G. So here's our first G chord pattern. We're at the third fret on the first string. The middle string is open, and then the bass string is one fret back. There's our first G chord. Now the way I'm going to be showing the chords is by a number system. So the bottom number represents your first string. The middle number represents your middle string, in this case it's zero. And then the top number represents your bass string, which in this case it's, it's fret number two on there. So three, zero, two. And you go, well, wait a minute. I thought it was one of those three patterns, you know. Well, the G chord is actually using that third pattern. See, remember how when we did harmonies and we got to the middle string and when we were the two behind it made that minory sound? But if we raise it up, that was the third note back. Well, that's what's happening when we're doing this one. That would be our first position. But if we take this one off, it becomes that third note. So the, the this G chord actually is that third pattern. So there's our G chord. Two fingers right there. Okay, now to make the D chord, we just move them both down one fret. So you're at fret number two and fret number one, open on the middle. So there's our, our first two chords, G chord and our D chord. Okay, now the C chord is our triangle pattern. Back to our G chord again. to the G again. 
Now we're going to be playing Amazing Grace, and at the end of Amazing Grace, there's a minor chord thrown in there. In, in the key of G, it's E minor. So while we're doing our G chord, we add that middle string, and remember how it makes a minor chord when we add the middle string? Well, now we want it, you know, so there's our E minor chord. So you're just doing your G chord, and you add that middle string in, and there's your E minor that you're looking for. You take it back off, you're back in G again. So, G chord, C chord, G chord, D chord, back to G again. Now the E minor, and the D chord again, and back to the G chord. Now, believe it or not, the reason why they show you those main chords on most other string instruments, because once you've learned those four chords, you can literally accompany hundreds, even thousands of tunes with just those four chords. So if you don't want to go any further than that right there, I mean, there's just tons and tons of songs you can already play backup for with just knowing those four chords right there. Now, here's the deal. If you're dulcimer, if you've normally been tuned into the key of D and you got some pretty heavy strings on there, your bass string may not go up to G. It may pop on you. The size of strings that we use, we use a 20 thousandths over here, a .020, which would be like a lighter gauge G string from a guitar. For the little ones, they're all the same, and they're a .010, a 10 thousandth, so a 10 and a 20. The reason why I like to use that gauge of string is because I can tune down to E, like I'm doing on the other videos, and it sounds good because the strings are heavy enough to still resonate well, but they're thin enough, they're light gauge enough to go up to the G without breaking them. So if you have too heavy of a string on right now and you can't tune up to G, you can still practice those patterns. Matter of fact, if you're just planning on playing by yourself, you're not planning on playing with anybody else, if you're just singing, if your dulcimer is pitched at a at a pitch that's comfortable with your voice, you can just back up yourself singing any song, just doing those four patterns right there. And you're playing in whatever key you're actually tuned to. Now, if you're a first time player, before we actually play the song, I wanna talk about timing real quick. If you're a first time player, don't worry about rhythms and everything yet. Now, if you got the rhythms down, you can use them. And we're going to talk about rhythms the second time we go through this song. But the first time, if you're a first time player, you've never played with anybody before, here's what I recommend you do. For example, we're going to start with a G chord. Now, Amazing Grace has three beats in the strum. So what we're going to do is just give three strums, one, two, three, one, two. And we're just going to strum the same direction, one, two, three, one, two. Now what that's doing, it's just kind of like you're clapping your hands along with the song, really is what we're doing. And right at first, while we're learning the song, I think it's good to just keep a steady beat like that, because one, for one thing, it's a little easier on us when we're first learning the song. The other thing is, is it helps you know what the timing feels like. So when we go through this the next time, and we start adding in some of those extra beats, already know what it should feel like. So that way, if you're adding too many beats, you'll, you'll know it doesn't feel correct and you know you're doing something wrong. So that's the reason why I always like to start people out just strumming the one direction when we're first learning. Okay, with all that in mind, let's go ahead and play our first round of Amazing Grace in the key of G. Okay, we're going to start off with our G chord. Everybody ready? Here we go. G.
the sea back to Jesus. At the end of lesson one, we already talked about adding the extra beat to our strum. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it at this point, but I am going to just recap it quickly. Okay, up to now, we've been strumming the one direction, and we've been given three beats for each measure to our song. One, two, three. 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 And so on. So now we're going to throw in that extra beat between the second and the third strum. And as you know from watching before, I call it the and beat. So now instead of one, two, three, we're going to be going one, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And that just adds a little bit of extra rhythm to our strum. So now it sounds like this. One, two, and three. 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 And that's all it takes to add that extra rhythm to your strum. So give it a go. If you feel like you're ready, just move right on. We're going to play Amazing Grace in the key of G. Add in the extra strum. Starting with the G chord, add in the extra B. Okay, now we've learned how to back somebody up if they're going to be playing or singing Amazing Grace in the key of G. But let's say we go play with somebody else and they say, well, we don't sing Amazing Grace in G, we sing it in C. Well, I learned how to play it in G, so how do I play along with them when they want to sing it in C? Well, the first chord we need is when they're playing in the key of C is a C chord. Now, the C chord we're going to learn this time is in the middle of the dulcimer. If you remember, the C chord from the key of G was down low. But this time we're going to learn our C chord in the mid-range. Now there's two reasons why you want to learn the same chord in different locations. Sometimes it's just the sound. On one song, we just like the way the lower chords sound. But on another song, we want to get a different feel, a different flavor out of our rhythm, our chords. We play the same chords, but in a higher location. So that's the first reason, is just strictly the tone. I like the tone better for this song. The second reason is convenience, and that's why we're doing the different chords in this particular song, for convenience. Okay, so we're going to start off with that C chord. And just to recap, the first note is on the 6th fret. The next note, the middle string, is on the 3rd fret. And the bass string is the 5th fret. 
And if you remember, that's that third pattern from our three patterns that we learned earlier. So there's our C chord. Now here's where the convenience comes in. The next chord we need is an F chord. Well, if we're doing this particular C chord to go from C to F, these two fingers only have to move up one fret each. So that's how easy it is to go from the C to F when you're playing the C chord in this particular position. Now, we could do the C chord down below, but it just makes it a little more convenient not to have to move around so much, especially if you're playing a faster song. You might have trouble making the chord changes smoothly enough. So let's go back, recap real quick the C chord, the sixth fret, the third fret, the fifth fret. When we make an F chord, those two fingers each move up one fret, so that puts us at the sixth fret the 4th fret, and the 6th fret on the bass. There's our F chord. Okay, let's move those two fingers back down to do the C chord again. Now the next chord we need when they're singing or playing in C is a G chord. So once again, we're going to learn how to do a different G chord than we did the first time. And again, it's for convenience. So now if we take that C chord, if we move those two fingers down just one fret each, there's the G chord you're looking for. So that G chord, the 5th fret, the 3rd fret on the middle string, the 4th fret on the bass string. There's our mid-range G chord. And then like I say, once again, move those two fingers up one fret, you're back to the C chord. Move those two fingers up one fret, you're at the F chord. So it puts the whole pattern for your whole C chord pattern just in that nice, tidy little package right there. Now, the minor chord we need when we're playing in the key of C is A minor. And once again, here's all you have to do. Okay, you're doing your C chord. That middle string, you move it up one fret. There's the A minor you're looking for. You move it back down, you're back to the C chord again. So to recap on, on the A minor chord, the sixth fret on the first string, fourth fret on the middle string, fifth fret on the bass string. There's our A minor chord. And drop that middle one back down you're back to the C chord again. So if they say we're going to sing it in the key of C, uh, that's all you need to know to back up somebody singing or playing Amazing Grace or any song that matter in the key of C. Okay, practice those chords when you feel comfortable, you're ready, move right on. We're going to be playing Amazing Grace in the key of C up to tempo. Okay, in the key of C, starting with C. We go C, F, back to C. Now the G, back to C. Now the F, back to C. A minor, now the G. Okay, now we're going to learn how to play Amazing Grace in the key of D. And as you probably figured out by now, the first chord we always need is the key that we're playing in. So if we're going to be playing it in D, that means our first chord is going to be a D chord. But once again, we're going to learn a different position for a D chord. So instead of this lower D chord, we're going to do that mid-range D chord, which puts us when we use the third position, that gives us a mid-range D chord. So that puts us at the seventh fret on the first string, the fourth fret on the middle string, the six and a half fret on the bass string. And there's our mid-range D chord. Now, to go into an A chord, these two fingers just slide down to their position, to the, to the number one position to make an A chord. So, six and a half fret, 
fourth fret, fifth fret. There's our A chord. And then once again, those two fingers is all you have to move to go to D. D chord, A chord, back to the D chord again. Now the next chord we need is a G chord. And once again, instead of going all the way back down to that G chord, while we're doing our D chord, if we take these two fingers and just move them up one fret each, it turns it from a D to a G chord. So that puts us at the seventh fret, the fifth fret, the seventh fret. And then once again, these two fingers just go down one fret back to a D chord. Then these two move down to the A. And that's all there is. The, the progression is all right there. Now the minor we need when we're playing in the key of D is a B minor chord. So while we're doing the D chord, just kind of like we did when we was playing in the key of C, this one finger just has to move up one space. And that turns it to the B minor chord we're looking for. There's the D chord, B minor. So to recap on that, seventh fret, fifth fret, six and a half fret makes our B minor chord. Move that middle string down one fret, and there's your D chord again. The A chord. Move those two fingers back up, make the D chord. Now the G chord. D chord. The A chord. And back to that D chord again. All right, so that's all you need to know to accompany somebody singing or playing Amazing Grace in the key of D. Practice those chords. When you feel you're ready, move right on. We're gonna play up to tempo the key of D, Amazing Grace. Okay, we're gonna start with the D chord. Here we go, D. G, back to D. All right, now we're going to learn how to chord along to Amazing Grace in the key of A. Now there's also, besides these four keys I'm showing in this lesson, there's other keys you can play it in on the dulcimer without retuning, or like the key of E. Uh, you could play it in the key of F if you wanted to without retuning. I just picked the most common keys I felt like most people might play it or sing it in. So the key of A. The first chord we need is our A chord. This time we're not going to learn a new A chord because for convenience, the A chord we learned in the last session when we were playing in the key of D, that works great for when we're playing in the key of A. So to recap that A chord we're doing, that's middle of the dulcimer, six and a half fret here, fourth fret there, fifth fret there. There's going to be our A chord. Now the next chord we need when we're playing in the key of A is a D chord. Now we already learned that D chord, so this is the same D chord that we learned just before. But just to recap, seventh fret, fourth fret, six and a half fret. Back to the A chord. Now the third chord that we need in the key of A is the E chord. So this is where I'm gonna show you how to do one of those power chords like we were talking about earlier. And, it, and in this case, it's for convenience. We're gonna use that power chord because it puts us doing all of our chords in the one little area. So the E power chord in this area, we're gonna be doing the first position power chord. 
So that puts us at the eighth fret on the first string and the fifth fret on the middle and the bass string right there. So there's our power E chord right there. And then we slide down back to our A chord again and the D chord, back to our A chord, that power E chord, and back to the A chord. Now the minor that we need when we're playing in the key of A is F sharp minor. So once again, all we have to do, these two fingers stay where they're at, this finger moves up to the six and a half fret, there's the F sharp minor chord we're looking for right there. So we got our A chord, we move up to the six and a half fret on the bass string and that's F sharp minor. So we're at the six and a half fret on the first string, fourth fret on the middle string, six and a half on the bass. There's our F sharp minor. Drop that pointy finger back down. We're back to the A chord. Move those two fingers up. There's your D chord. The power E chord. And the A chord. All right, so that's all you need to know to play Amazing Grace in the key of A. Okay, we're going to be playing the key of A. So we're going to start off with this A chord. Here we go. A. Now the D. Back to A. That E chord. Back to A. Now the D. Back to A. F sharp minor. Now that E chord. Back to A. Okay. Go for it. Okay, now before we close out this lesson, I want to talk about adding some embellishment, some flavor to our chord playing. Okay, say we've been at this a while. We've been doing our chords. We're getting pretty comfortable with the rhythms. We're getting very comfortable with our chord changes. As a matter of fact, it's at the point where we're not even thinking about it that hard. You know, we just automatically make the chord changes. You know, it's coming a lot more automatic, a lot more familiar to us. Well, now we're ready to spice up our chord playing a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a chord, and while these two fingers are holding the chord, we're going to be throwing in some little lead runs and some little fillers over here on our melody line. For example, let's start with this A chord. That's a fun pattern right here. So we're at the six and a half fret here. We're at the fourth fret there and the fifth fret on the bass string. That's our mid-range A chord. Well, while these two fingers keep the chord going on the other two strings, we're going to be throwing in some little lead runs and, and, uh, and fillers on the, mid, on the first string. So what we do, while these two fingers are keeping the A chord for us, we find out what notes can I reach that harmonize with that A chord over there? So we start with our regular A chord and then we just walk around and we find out what notes we can reach that harmonize with, that, with those chords. Okay, so I found out pretty much anything I could reach actually harmonizes with that A chord as long as I stay off the sixth fret because that turns it into the A minor chord. If you remember from when we were learning how to play in the key of C, that's our A minor chord right there. And if everybody else is doing an A chord, that A minor won't work. So I know that while I'm doing that A chord, I can throw any little filler in I want on that first line as long as I stay off that sixth fret right there. So let's go back to it. Now let's switch to our D chord. 
like to that A chord. Now that power E. And that's just a quick and easy way to learn how to add little fillers and embellishments to your, to your chord progressions. And, and so the same way, you pick a chord, why these two fingers keep the chord going, you find out what notes you can reach on that first string that harmonize with that chord. And you know, well, once again, as long as I stay off that sixth fret, and even the six and a half fret, because that turns it into a minor as well too on that one. So I know if I stay off the six and six and a half fret, then I know that anything, any of those other notes are gonna harmonize with that D chord. So pick your chord, like there's our G chord. Then that C chord. Now that D. And what you do is you just play around with it, see what sounds good to you, and then you'll remember those patterns after you do them a few times in a row. So that's the idea. You just play around with it, pick you a chord, find out what notes you can reach that harmonize with the chord, and then you start to throw them as, in as fillers. And you can practice with the Amazing Grace. You can go back to all the different, or you know, whichever key you want to in the Amazing Grace, and pick that key. And you can just practice throwing them little runs and fillers in to get used to it. And once again, before long, it becomes second nature and you start adding them without thinking about it. Now, the other thing this does is it brings us up to lesson four. Now, when lesson four comes out, it's gonna be learning how to play chord melody style. Now, all the videos, if you've seen me do all them uh, demo videos on our electric dulcimers, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing what I call chord melody plan. See, when we, in lesson one, we learned how to do melodies. And then in lesson two, we learned how to add harmonies to those melodies. You know, for example, then in lesson three, we learned how to chord along to play back up while somebody else is singing or playing those metal. Now, what lesson four is going to do is teach us as a solo player, when we don't have anybody else backing them up, how we can do the chords and the melody both at the same time. We don't have to wait for anybody else to be our backup or our lead. We can do both of them. So while these fingers are holding the chords down, we're going to be picking melody up and down the one line. For example, so that's what we're going to get into in lesson number four. We're going to start learning how to do our chords and our melodies at the same time. And actually to tell you the truth, and that's the reason why I play that way most of the time when I'm playing by myself, chord melody plan not only sounds bigger and fuller than doing the melody and harmony along, it's a lot easier to do because instead of having to move around with all the harmonies, these two fingers are staying stationary most of the time. Why we're just moving around the melody over here on the one line. So actually in a lot of ways, not only does it sound bigger and fuller, it's a lot easier to do as well too. So look forward to see you when we do the next lesson. Thanks a lot for watching. Any questions, as always, give us a holler over at the shop.